we've talked about Broadway's biggest night, let's talk about Off-Broadway's hottest ticket, Little Shop of Horrors, because Suddenly Seymour is Skylar Aston. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Thanks, Tamsin. Hailed by theater fans for performances in Spring Awakening and TV's Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, Skylar Aston is finally back on the New York stage in Little Shop of Horrors. We caught up outside the West Side Theater. This is Little Shop of Horrors. This is Little Shop of Horrors. One of my favorite musicals. Is this like a, a show that you have deep connections to? Have you been performing this in your bedroom since you were a little wannabe Broadway performer a little, kid? A little tyke, as they say in Little Shop. <laughs> I actually, um, hot take, no. It's now become something I'm deeply connected uh -huh. to, but uh, I only knew the hits, Summer That's Green and Suddenly Seymour. And uh, I came into this seeing, I have, I have seen the 2019 production in the, the original cast. So I saw John Not and Tammy and okay. your in, Spring Christian. Awakening friend. Yes. Yeah. So I saw that. So based on that and just the source material, I was so excited. You did not have this. What, what, like, what, I didn't know Skid Row. I didn't know Grow For Me. I didn't know. No, I didn't see the movie. Insane. Where have you been? A big musical theater blind spot. <laughs> I'm not some like movie TV guy who doesn't know his stuff either. Like I know yeah. my stuff. Yeah. It's weird. I guess in hindsight, now that I know it so well, yeah. it's, it's, I could say it, it was a dream role. Now I would be disappointed if I didn't get to do it in some capacity. But it must be fun. It's such a great classic Alan Menken, yeah. uh, Howard Ashman score. Well, just like with any of his stuff, you, now you can't unknow it. I'm like quoting it in this interview. Like, I, you know, <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's so embedded in me already now. You, you hear the, the seedlings of Be Our Guest and Part of Your World and yeah. Newsies. Uh, and, and that classic, iconic Mencken Ashman sound. And this is one of their earlier works. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting to do one that I find perfect. So let's talk about Seymour. Okay. He's kind of the ultimate nerd. Is he a nerd? Is he a geek? What is he? He's. I think he's a introvert, a, a misunderstood uh, a young man who sleeps under a counter in the basement of a flower shop. And so that, that affects an him orphan, socially. A child of the streets. A child of the streets. <laughs> and, um, and I think that affects the way he sees life. He wants what he, he, does, he can't have, and that's freedom from um, his, his given circumstances. And that's a very understood thing. That's a classic I want moment, you know, part of your world. I want to be where the people are. And, and, and that's, that's how we find Seymour. And then he is presented with a pretty unique opportunity. Right now, I'm sure this changes all the time, but right now, what is like your favorite moment in Little Shop every night? Get It's really funny. Not funny, fun. Get It's fun. Uh-huh, with the plant. Yeah. Yes. I like the moment I lead into the song because the audience always like gets excited. The lights go green. He says, feed me. Does it have to feed be human? Me. Feed me. Feed me. Does it have to be mine? Feed me. Where am I supposed to get it? And then I have a big rock star moment. Yes, and I get do. up on the table. Yeah. What is it like being with that puppet? Love it. It feels like I'm talking to the real thing. Yeah. It's it's done so expertly by Eric Wright and Teddy Udane and uh, and Aaron, of course, voicing the plant. It's just this beautiful moment of theatrical synergy and magic, and I love playing with it. We we actually like found a beat, like a, like a fun new beat with the plant that we have to like now kind of readjust for, like physically, because it takes literally three people wow. to come up with a new bit. So there's a moment where I kind of draw him in to look at me, but now we've been doing this kind of tag. I don't know, it's just nerdy stuff like yeah. that that I love. Little Shop of Horrors started as a little off-Broadway show, right. and then it became this big movie, then it became a Broadway musical, and right. this is sort of a return to the roots. Yes. It's a nice, small, intimate, the West Side Theater is like a great, perfect. great theater for this show. Yes, I, I think this is the perfect house for this production. Yeah. I think it's integral to the piece. Uh, what I love so much about Michael Mayer's vision with this production specifically is that it has no intentions of transferring to Broadway and yeah. becoming any sort of um, run like that. And so I think that took the pressure off and, and it just gave a perfect sandbox for this to live in. Yeah, it's like it's, it's real theater magic, right? It and it's like kids in high school doing a yeah. show almost because yeah. it's like it's everything sort of down to the bare bones. Yeah, one, one boy's dressing room, one girl's dressing room, like close quarters and all love, all bits, all comedy, all nerdy like little trinkets we all have on our stations. These are my people. You know, there's been a lot of sort of celebrating about Spring Awakening again, uh, now that you're all accomplished adults who have gone on to so many amazing things. What's right. it been like 
hearing everybody sort of talk about it again and doing the reuniting on Broadway. And it's been amazing. I, I really like talking to people that saw the documentary that weren't here in 2006 to see it. And they just, they get the sense of its importance and um, of that time specifically in my life that I've only been retelling people, you know? I was like, you don't understand, because it was pre-Twitter, in a way like pre-camera phones. I mean, there were yeah. pictures to be taken, yeah. but not, not in the same way. And we were like the Beatles of 49th Street. Like, you remember, yeah. it was, you know, <laughs> pre-COVID, so people were at the stage door grabbing and tugging. But it really speaks to the vitality and the strength of theater and the significance of being here when it happened. It's like a time capsule. And so explaining that to people is kind of difficult. And now we have this amazing representation of what it was and what it's become and where we are and where we've come and very grateful for those who've known documentary.